So we've got Luther the Chow Chow in today for some work on the lead. Now, Luther's probably never been walked on a collar before, only ever on a harness and a flex lead, giving him quite a lot of control uh, when he's been out for his walk. So I'm going to introduce a slip lead really slow and controlled at this stage. Now, I've offered him some food. He's taking food. For this type of dog that is a little bit aloof, that doesn't typically like being told what to do, if they're not taking food and we can't offer to give them something for walking nice on the lead and there's nothing in it for them, then I suggest looking at building the food drive first. Don't be trying to walk your big strong-willed breeds like your Akitas, your Chows, your Sharpays when we can't offer them a, a deal sweetener, if it wasn't for a better phrase, uh, when it comes to walking on the lead. So I'm going to pop the slip lead on him. Chances are we might see fireworks. He's probably about one years old. He's probably just had a lot of control on the walks up until this point. So um, we'll see how we go. Probably don't even want this over his head. Nice. So lead's going to go on. Leave that here, and you can see him like stiffening right up straight away. So, yeah, good lad. All I'm going to start doing really slow is just good lad, good boy. I'm not going to start like fucking loads of walking and turn straight away. He's not that type of dog. He's going to like, he'll start hating that. So, Slip lead's going to go on. I'm going to fit it right. Good lad. A little bit of food. And then a little bit of movement. Good lad. If he comes with me. Pop, 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 pop. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. I'm not worried about Marcus for now. Just putting the lead on him. Good lad. And now we're going to go this way. Good boy. That's nice. Slow and steady. Cocker Spaniel, crazy food drive. I can fucking just start going up and down and start teaching them what we want from the heel work. Guy like this, good boy. <clears throat> He's going to be a little bit more sensitive to that pressure. So slow and steady wins the race. Again, this is going to be a very intentionally short session. Good boy. Yeah. Good lad, good, good lad, good boy. So I'm going to start moving away from him, adding a bit of pressure to that lead. As soon as he comes with, I'm just going to place some food in front of his fucking nose. Make it nice and easy. I'm going to change direction, a bit of pressure on that lead. As soon as he comes with and the lead gets slack, I can just good. Good. What a good boy. Now he's here purely for lead pulling, so good lad. Of course, we're going to address the other factors in his life to make sure that we're fulfilling him, we're doing right by him, but also at the same time. Good lad. Move away. He comes with. And move away. Good lad. A boy. I'm just going to concentrate on him for a second. And we're moving. Good boy. Bup, 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 bup. Bup, bup. Yeah, good boy. And he hasn't got crazy food drive. Good lad. I had a chat with his mum this morning. She's been a bit naughty. Not followed the food homework quite as, as regimented as we would like. Good boy. And we're going to go into our turns now. Okay. Because I don't think I'm going to get a massive tantrum. Good lad. Good boy. Up, 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 up. And again, I'm looking for nose behind toes. As soon as toes go, uh, nose goes out in front, we get that little bit of a turn. Up, up. Good lad. Small pulses with the lead. He eases up with the pressure. He might even look at me. I'm gonna deliver food. Good lad. Up, up. Good boy. Hey. Yeah, they're a good boy. Now we're talking. Cool, so I'm just going to keep working up and down, and this might be you at home in your garden with your dog. Do not do this if your dog's not taking food. Good lad. We want to make the lead a good thing. We don't want to make control a bad thing. So we're always associating 
the element of walking ice on a lead with food and reinforcement to begin with. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Oh, he's a good boy. That a good boy. So many times I've seen this type of dog that we'd go on and train and try and boss them around really, really quickly. These aren't going to like that. And then they're going to throw a big fucking wobbler, big hissy fit. Your Shiba Inus are going to do it. Your Sharpays are going to do it. Your Chow Chows are going to do it. Your Japanese Akita. A lot of your Asian breeds are going to do that. They're a bit more independent than our Western bred breeds. So good lad. Good lad. So we ask for that element of control. Sometimes we get fireworks. This is pretty good. Doesn't have to be a long session. In a moment, like I'm gonna just a little bit more. And then I'll probably switch him back onto his flexi, flexi lead and harness and go put him up, put him away. Good lad. Good boy. Now I'm looking for moments in time where he's feeling like hitting the end of the slip lead and then coming with. Good lad. At no point am I going to just lure him into that position here. Again, we have to teach the dog what the pressure of the lead means. And when they feel it, which they inevitably will, turn around to turn it off. Good lad. Good lad. We always introduce a little bit of pressure into teaching phases because when the if we do not introduce the pressure of the lead into teaching phases and later on our dog's perhaps having a reaction or whatever it may be, they're not going to understand how to turn that pressure off because they've never been taught about the pressure, right? So we can't just lure, 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 then stick a prong collar on our dog, walk down the street, lure, 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 they react to a dog and we pop the prong collar, whatever it may be, what's going to happen then is they're going to have a, an amplified reaction because of the pressure is non-contextual and they're just going to be in a momentary discomfort whilst they're in a reaction, more than likely making the reaction worse. Good lad. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. And he's got a cool as hell name. His name's Luther. Luther. Yeah. Good oh boy. I spent another couple of minutes just doing this with him. Just up and down. Hits the end of the lead. Little pulses. What I'm imagining here is there's like a COVID bubble around me. And it's his job to kind of stay in that bubble. If he tries to leave the bubble, I'm going to change direction pulse with that lead and once he finds himself back in this heel position and I can guarantee this dog has never been walked on a collar before once he finds himself back in the heel position I reinforce that I add the food after the dog's found the behavior and that's the definition of reinforcement we add in a positive consequence after a wanted behavior or after any behavior sorry to make the behavior more likely again we don't introduce the food to get the behavior because of them we're going to have a dog that's never really making choices for themselves And again, we're doing this in a, as sterile as possible environment. Uh, I'll always say this, there's no such thing as a completely sterile environment, whether that's in your living room, in your garden. But lad, good boy. And he's getting a bit nosy because the van's pulled in here. So same, same thing though, same drill. Good boy. See that little head, little check-in, little, little check, where, where are you, Jacob? Where are you? I'm going to pay that. Good lad. As soon as I run out of food, slip lead's going to come off. Again, I need something in there to sweeten the deal with Luther. Good boy. Nice. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. And a good boy. And a good boy. He handsome. Yeah. Very handsome. I bet you get that fucking coat stinking, don't you, mate? We need a few baths. Good. Uh, we're going to practice throughout all of these tutorials. Dog on my left. And you'll see the lead change sometimes. It'll be like this. Sometimes it'll be like this. That's dependent on height of dog. Depending on how comfortable the handler is. Good boy. We like that. See... What happened there is he went to pull out in front, he backed up, and was like, checked, and said, hey, I went too far, right? And I said, yeah, you did, but you, you fixed it, bud, so we get some food, lad. Tap, tap, tap. 
at any uh, no point do I stop moving. So I'm not going to, if the dog stops, I'm not going to stop and just tap, 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 tap. I'm going to tap, 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 move. Good. He finds the position. Yes. Good lad. Very nice. But again, it's really important that we're keeping the dog's attitude nice and high at this stage. Uh -uh. We don't want to build like an aversion to training. Good boy. I'll be walked on a lead. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. That's nice. That's nice. Good boy. Tap, 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 tap. Good boy. This is nice and we can pay. Good boy. I maybe we've got like five pieces of food left. Da, 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 da. Good boy. I'm going to use them up. Switching back to the flexi. Session one finished. That'll be fine. Up, up, up. Up, up. Up, up, up. up. Good boy. Again, a couple of distractions coming in. This is his first session. I want as little distraction as possible. I want to get this sort of behavior. Second nature before I start introducing a, a greater draw. And even then when I do, I want fabricated uh, draws. So Stooge is helping me out, with friends and colleagues here, and it might be your friends, family at home. Good boy, good lad. That's what we want, that's nice. And we check in there. Really nice, I'm gonna pay him the rest of the food because I love that one. He's gonna eat all the food like a good boy. Not a crazy food-driven dog. I'd like to see a little bit more food drive there. So, um, once he starts only getting fed through training, which is what I'm going to recommend to his owner, though, I think that'll come really, really quickly. I mean, ultimately, he is taking food, and these guys aren't typically great with their food. He's happy. He's not falling out with me. The harness is going to go back on now into throwaway mode, as we call it, so I didn't give a shit if he pulls in this mode because I'm not going to put him in tricky environments whilst he's in this mode. And then he's going to take the slip lead off. And careful not to, like, pull on his fur or anything like that. Catch an ear. Because what's going to happen then? He's going to not like the slip lead going on. Add a good boy. Add a good boy. So slip lead goes on. That's like saying to the dog, right, restaurant's open. We're going to do a little bit of work. Session one. That's about as good as it can get, really. Especially with this type of dog. Up and down. We might have spent five, ten minutes or whatever it may be. Reinforce the behavior we do want, start teaching him a bit of lead pressure. He got the grips of it by the end. Later on, we'll do exactly the same session. If you're just starting this at home, you can do this two, three times a day, and then you might get uh, an increase in difficulty within three to seven days. It really does depend how many reps you're doing, how food motivated your dog is. But yeah, that's pretty good. When I have to use very little lead pressure and the dog is just following me, following me, following me, just looking for the food, that's when I need to start adding in an increase in the draw and distraction around me. Let's say he's dog reactive. Ooh, it's not going to be a dog straight away. It's going to be maybe my friend with a ball or someone trying to, trying to coax him in with food or whatever it may be. Just a bit of a distraction. Try and draw his attention away from me so we can. he understands the concept of walking on that lead. Even when there's something that is uh, motivating him more than the job at hand. Okay, so... Good session one with Luther. That would be an introductory session that you're going to probably do in your garden with your essential food. And then we'll bring him back out later and start increasing the draws value. All right, perfect. Come on then, Luther. 